Good morning, everyone. This is Sarah with Harrisburg Project. And today, although it feels very much like fall here, uh, we're gonna go over the summer term orphanage. Uh, so this is gonna be the claim from this past summer. If you have not attended a training with us before, you can ask questions in the questions pod as we go throughout the session. Also, I uploaded your handout in your GoToWebinar menu. It's under the handouts um, section of that um, GoToWebinar flyout. If you can't see the GoToWebinar menu, just look for a little orange arrow, click on that, and it should open that up for you. Um, so you can ask questions throughout the session. You don't have to hold them until the end. Um, if, I, if it's a few minutes before I get to your question, that just means we're probably gonna talk about that subject in a couple slides, so I'm not ignoring you, just waiting um, to get to that point. So um, again, just ask your questions as you need to, and we will go ahead and get started. Um, hopefully, oh, I did mention the handout, so okay. All right, so for summer term orphanage, what are we talking about? So the biggest thing you need to remember for this is that this claim is being done in last school year. So this is our last requirement in the previous school year that you will have. After this, you won't have to switch back for anything else. So remember that you need to be in that pinkish salmon colored screen when you're working on the summer term orphanage claim. This is only for the summer of 2023. So this past summer, but that past summer is part of last school year. So we're looking in the 22-23 school year to file this claim. So these are gonna be fund codes D, E, or F. Most of you, almost all of you will not have fund code D because we only have one co-op that has fund code D students. So oftentimes you'll hear me and other people at Harrisburg Project and at ISB just refer to E and F. And that's why, because the Ds aren't as common, but it is for fund codes D, E, and F. So this is your orphanage students and your private facility orphanage students. This is going to be due November 1st this year. And just remember that we're changing back into last school year. So you need to make sure that you have that pinkish colored background when you're working on this claim. Now, if you have filed regular term orphanage, you know that if you do not receive an invoice from a co-op or another district, um, or if they're private facility and you, you, know, you get invoices from them, then you know that fi figuring out the cost can um, take some time and it, it is quite the ordeal. However, for summer term, we don't use all of the same aspects or the same forms that we do for the regular term. So this is kind of a slim down version of what you do during regular term for summer term. So the first thing you're going to do is um, identify your summer term orphans. So you need to find your fund E students. You need to find your fund F students that had summer term services for 2023. You can still add those records now. So summer term only. Those are the only records that you can add into the 22-23 school year right now. So until November 1st, you can add those approval records and make the claim. Now, this is always going to be the manual method of computing days. You're never gonna use program and we're not gonna use calendar because we don't have summer calendars, okay? So when your district superintendent submits um, their public calendar for the year, that's just for a regular term. So we do not have official electronic summer calendars. Now, maybe you have that at your district, but that is not at the ISB level. So not everyone in the state has access to those calendars. So it's manual only, which means that you will be typing in the number of days enrolled in days and sessions. So, you know, it's probably gonna be, maybe let's say it's 22 days. You would just have to type those two numbers in. And if the child was there less than the 22 days, then you're gonna have to show that manually, okay? Next, we'll go through how you enter the claim data how you recheck edits on this claim, um, how you run, your, run the reports after you're done, and then of course where you can get help if you do need support from us at Harrisburg Project. So how do you find these summer term orphans if you are unsure if you have any? Well, the first place you're gonna look is going to be an ISTAR to see have you or someone else already entered these students into the system. Now, if they're not in the system, there's not a lot that we can help you do. 
um, with that. But maybe you can go back and look at regular term and see, okay, my regular term kids, um, here's my list, you know, did any of these students actually go to summer school also? So that would be an indication of students you need to add. But brand new students that just came for summer and were orphans, it's gonna be really hard for us to help you identify. So those are the two things you should be looking for. So if you don't have summer term records, look at regular term records from last year. See if you should add any for summer. And then you can look to see if summer records have already been added into the system. It's a two-step process since we're looking for two different fund codes. So you would be back in the school year for 22-23, term of summer, and you can search for E's and then you can search for F's also. Now there are a lot of ways you can identify this. So if you like to um, uh, use Excel and you just wanna do the 22, 23 in summer and export those results, then you can use your sort uh, in Excel between E and F. So a lot of different options for how you can identify the kids. It's just what is your preference. So if you don't wanna do the two steps, you can export and sort within the spreadsheet. So it's totally up to you. Now, remember that you may have more than just E and F if you're just gonna go with the summer term though. So this will guarantee you results just for E, just for F. All right, so make sure that you're changing that school year back and that you see this pinkish salmon colored screen on the background. That's how you'll know that you are in the correct school year for this claim. All right, so you do have to create a cost center or a program, basically on paper, okay? So you're not gonna use the program definition in ISTAR, but you are gonna have to have a grouping of students like a program. It's going to basically be a cost center. And so you're going to be um, defining your summer program. Is it one big program? Are you a small district with one big special ed program? Um, are you a larger district where you may have multiple special ed programs? Those are the things that we're looking for when we're saying define your summer program or programs, okay? So remember you have to follow the rules still. So what are the rules? Well, if you've filed regular term, then you kind of have an idea. But if you haven't, the rules are that the kids need to have common educational needs when you're putting them together. So the biggest thing for summer is that you need to make sure that you are creating a program that does not include regular ed students. So when we create this cost center, we're talking about a special ed summer program, okay? So we need to make sure that you are not missing students because they're regular ed, because those kids would be incurring the costs of um, what it costs to run the program. So we can't leave them out because then we're going to um, inflate the cost of the program without having all the students in it. So we need to make sure that, you know, we're, we're forming these programs properly. Okay. So that's what I mean when I say remember to follow the rules. So typically they need to have common educational needs. That may be a little bit looser in the summer, but the biggest thing for summer is that make sure it's a special ed program. Okay, not a combined. Um, let's see, no program method. Um, manual method is the only option. So what do you gather? Well, it's not gonna be as bad as regular term, but you're gonna need some help. This is probably a decent time to ask for this help because we are in the middle of a school year. So the people that you need um, aren't off on summer vacation and things like that. So we know sometimes regular term is, it's hard to obtain these things that you need, but now shouldn't be as hard. So what do you need? You need costs from your bookkeeper, all right? You need related service, service costs and you need a calculator. So essentially you probably need um, something to write with and, and paper, but we need costs and we need, need a way to calculate them. Okay, so this is not going to be something that ISTAR is going to do the majority of the work for you. It's just not um, able to be done for summer term. So what do you do? You take your students, you make a list of all the students that are in the summer program. So we're talking about a special ed summer program, okay? Remember, we're not talking about regular ed and we can't just include a list of special ed students when if they're going to be involved with regular ed kids as well. OK, and where we really need to watch that is with those teachers. Who are those teachers seeing in the summer? OK, so you're going to make a list of all the teacher costs in the summer program. 
So this is where you're going to be asking your bookkeeper. I need to know summer salaries for these teachers. And then you're going to look at supplies. So anything that it costs to run that program supply wise during the summer, we're not going to be using AFR numbers. We're not using a per cap. OK, so we're not able to incur any other costs because those numbers do not relate to summer term. Those are all used for regular term only. So if you have supplies that you know about and you're able to come up with a concrete number for those, then put them in. OK, so it's pretty straightforward with these. You're just making three lists, which is similar to what we do in regular term. OK, so the students, the teachers and your supplies. And what you do is take all of the costs that you receive and add them together and divide them by the number of students in the program. And that will give you your cost per pupil. OK. I don't see any questions, so I hope that this is all coming across easily here. So your cost per 1.0 ADE, um, that's going to be the maximum cost to educate a student. OK, so we're going to know that. Um, if you have a student that is all of the full 22 days, say, for example, that this would be their cost. Um, for manual method, you'll still enter that cost, even if they go less, and the system will calculate it for you. Okay. So you add all the costs together, divide by the number of students, and then you're going to put in manual FTE should be 1.0. Remember, if you change it to anything less, it's going to affect your claim. Your summer term, you're going to type in your days enrolled and your days in session, and then you'll type in your cost. So that's going to be the cost for one student for the whole term. For, so for the whole summer term, that's what you figured out. So what the 1800 will do is look to see is basically the ADE or the FTE less than 1.0. So your ADE is your days enrolled divided by your days in session. So if they come, say, 18 days instead of 20, your ADE would be less than one. So the 1800 would look at the ADE and say, oh, we need to deflate this cost a little bit because the child wasn't there the full number of days. So if they were only there 18 days. Then your actual cost per pupil, which would be your claim, is going to be less. OK, and remember for your orphans, for Fund E, you can include transportation costs. Now, for Fund F, this cost area is going to look a little bit different. And so what you're going to do for cost per pupil for F will be add up your invoices from the private facility. OK, so everything we've looked at so far is going to be if you're building a public program. When they are at a private facility and they're Fund F, you're going to do that like you did Fund B. So you're going to take everything that you were charged, add it together. It should equal out to the summer days times the summer rate. So that should be the total. <clears throat> OK, so how can I add summer approval records for Fund E students that attend summer school? You're just going to go through your ad process. OK, so you just go into ISTAR like you're adding in a new student. And it will only allow you to do orphanage summer term that's the only thing it's going to allow you to save okay so when you go to your reported tab down at the bottom in the middle you're, there's your add button and if you click on that search for your student and then start creating your record so it's just like adding any other approval record during the year okay so how do you recheck edits on these kids? Now, we're going to be sending you error reports as we get closer to this. Remember, we can only send you error reports on the students we know about. So they have to be an I-star for us to be able to error check them. And the students that are not entered are the ones we cannot help you with. So remember, you need to try to get those students entered if you find out about them. So you're going to go back to the 22-23 school year. You can Filter this down to term of summer and run it separately on ENF, or you can just leave it at summer. It's up to you and hit your recheck edits. And this will update the error report in last school year so that you know that it is current. And so you're going to be under student and errors. So student claim errors by resident district and serving school. But remember, change your school year back to 22-23. You can run it to a PDF or you can export it to Excel. So either one, but again, we will be sending emails and making phone calls 
just like we always do leading up to any um, snapshot date. So we will be assisting throughout this, but if you wanted to look today, this is how you would do it, but you need to make sure you recheck edits first because that is what ensures that the report is completely up to date. All the air checking has been triggered for that, okay? Because we have not had our air checking turned on in last school year for quite some time. When you're done with the claim, you can come over and run a report. Again, make sure you're in last school year. It's gonna be a student report, but you're gonna change your category to reimbursement claim. And this is gonna be the student reimbursement funds D, E, and F summer term. So you can run that when you're done with your claims to have a record. Okay, I will take any questions that anyone has. Um, all right, good question. Would I enter a begin date of the same day the summer program began? Yes, as, as long as that student actually attended that first day. So when you're adding in a new record, you're gonna put your begin date in when the student started during summer term. If they came the first day, then it's gonna be the first day, but if they didn't come till maybe the third day, then you would use the third day. So it's gonna be when they actually began receiving services in the summer program. Okay, if we thought they were going to attend, but they did not, it is okay to just delete the record. Yep, we don't need that record if you're not gonna make the claim. If they didn't come, we don't, need, we don't need it in there because it will look like they did attend and then it will look like you're not making a claim. So get rid of the whole approval record if they did not attend at all. Okay, I will take any more questions anyone has. Okay, I don't see any more questions, but if anyone thinks of anything after you um, get back to your desk or get out of the session, then just please send us an email or give us a call. Um, we're happy to help on this. Remember, we have about a month or so, well, less than a month. It's further into October than I think, but um, due November 1st, so at least a couple weeks. Um, so we will, again, be calling and emailing and all those good things starting probably next week, I would say. Um, so we'll be starting all of those good things and um, contacting you if we see those errors. So be sure to reach out to us if you need any help at all. And I will see all of you at the next session. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.